Welcome back, everyone. A quantum computer doesn't look or act at all like the computers that we use every day. It relies on different laws of physics to run calculations at super fast speeds. Tonight, Google is revealing a breakthrough in the technology that it says could ultimately lead to the discovery of new kinds of medicine or help grow our food more efficiently. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze with a rare look inside Google's quantum computing lab. It's a breakthrough that could lead to a world once only thought possible in sci-fi. Our exclusive look inside Google's quantum computing lab in Santa Barbara, California. Not everyone <laughs> gets to look at these things up close. Where Julian Kelly is part of a team building this, a quantum computer running on a special chip called Willow. This chip is what's actually doing all those calculations super fast. Exactly. It solved a calculation in just a few minutes that would have taken today's fastest supercomputer 10 septillion years. That's 10 followed by 24 zeros. We can run it 13,000 times faster on our chip. 13,000 times faster than a regular computer with this. Not a regular computer, the world's largest supercomputer. Wow. Now we're the first to see how it's reached a major milestone. A new algorithm Google says provides the instructions to a quantum computer for making discoveries about the fundamental properties of Earth and human systems. It's one more step that shows that quantum computers will be able to make useful predictions that are beyond what classical computers could ever do. If it sounds complicated, well, it is. Quantum computing relies on a totally different set of scientific rules than the classical computing we're used to on our laptops or phones. Explain in the simplest form what that set of rules is. So uh, in classical physics, a ball can be in one location or another, but not both. But in quantum physics, uh, a ball can actually be in both locations at the same time, or what's called a superposition. You mean two places at once? Two places at once, exactly. Henry Ewan teaches computer science at Columbia University. He says that idea that things can be in two places at once gives quantum computing unique abilities. A metaphor that I like to use is, a, you know, a classical computer is more like a car that you drive to get from point A to point B. You drive it around to, you know, go to the grocery store, to the airport. Um, a quantum computer is like a rocket ship. Hmm. It can travel really fast. In other words, this isn't like a laptop that you might have at your house. Right. Uh, we believe that quantum computers will be more useful for, let's say, uh, industrial R&D or very, you know, sophisticated uh, physics experiments. That's where Google's announcement comes into play. Executives say its new algorithm could take quantum computing out of the hypothetical and into the real world in fields like agriculture or drug manufacturing. What are some examples of how this could be used in actual real life? A quantum computer could actually be critical in the drug discovery process. What the pharmaceutical companies uh, have to do is they do a lot of trial and error. They make different drug candidates. Some of them work and some of them don't. What a quantum computer could do is it allow you to focus on the ones that are much more likely to succeed and less time kind of going through trials that wouldn't work at all. Is it a stretch to say quantum computing could save lives? Absolutely, yes. Not a stretch at all. It's not a stretch at all. We sat down for a rare interview with Hartmut Nevin, a trained physicist and neuroscientist and an enthusiast of the Burning Man Music Festival. He founded Google Quantum AI in 2012. I like to go to the edges of human experiences early. From other tech titans like Amazon, Microsoft and IBM to young startups and universities, an intense competition over the future of quantum computing is well underway. We have to say on our toes, there's a lot of competition out there from startups to nation states. Building this tech requires deep expertise and pockets. Every part of it has to be really good because if in one seemingly mundane piece not working and the whole thing will not work. A lot of this apparatus. Inside the lab, we get a glimpse of just how complicated it is to get quantum computers to work without any errors. One of the key challenges that must be resolved before they can live up to their potential. The quantum computers we make operate at very low temperatures. So put our goggles on. We pour liquid nitrogen over a fresh flower. Within seconds, it's completely frozen. And that's uh, around minus 200 uh, Celsius or minus 300 and something Fahrenheit. What is happening to this flower? Yeah, so it's getting quite cold. Wow. And you'll see that, for example, now this thing is very brittle. So if you just kind of touch <gasps> it, it completely, crumbles. it completely crumbles. So that seems pretty cold, right? Freezing. Freezing. So this is actually way too hot for our quantum computer. 
crispy. It almost. takes four more stages of cooling to get a low enough temperature for the quantum computer chip stored at the very bottom of the base to behave. Every one of these plates gets colder, 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 colder until this volume down here is basically one of the coldest places in the entire universe. So you need to keep it cold so that the actual chip works the way you want it to work. Exactly. That's right. Decades ago, like people would have to build these systems in their own physics laboratories and the very bespoke thing. And now actually there's an entire industry of different suppliers that sell these dilution refrigerators for the quantum computing industry and also just for scientific research purposes. They're banking on this being the future. Right. Yeah. But just how soon that future will arrive is up for debate. Companies like Google have said this technology is life changing. Is that hyperbole? So I believe eventually that will be right. It's the time scale that's more the question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wouldn't bet on it being life changing in uh, the next five years, at least for you know everyday uh, users. And when that day comes, there's a big danger from quantum computing that we should all be preparing for now. Quantum computers, being able to factor large numbers, will be able to break most of the encryption technologies that we use today. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason to worry. That's kind of scary. I mean, all of the tech that's encrypted that we think all that data is safe, quantum computers could get right past that. That's right. Even if quantum computers are still, let's say, a decade or two out, mm -hmm. um, there's still a worry that our secrets that we store today might be vulnerable to people reading them in the future. We asked Google if quantum computing is the next AI. It's a little bit comparing apples uh, with oranges. Uh, so it will not supplant AI. Um, quantum computing will enhance AI and allow it to solve problems that AI on classical computers would not be able to solve. AI is in the name of this lab, quantum, Google Quantum AI. What's behind that decision to put it together like that? I worked in AI before, but then came to the realization that aided um, with quantum computing, AI will become so much more powerful and will be able to solve problems that AI running on classical computers will never be able to solve. You have called yourself a chief optimist before. Are you too optimistic about this technology ever? Do you feel like maybe you're overshooting? <laughs> I, I mean, I feel the results speak for themselves. You know, of course, you know, when you predict the future, you can po impossibly be right uh, all the time. I think now people are starting to see, oh, wait a minute, quantum computing in 10 years, we'll speak about it in the same terms we speak about AI today. Lots of potential upside there. Thanks to Elizabeth Schulze.